I'm Ariel. Thank you for hosting us at this year's fifth annual Disrupt CRE. So this was my first time attending, but I'd love to hear a little bit more from you. What exactly is Disrupt CRE, what that means, and what you really want out of these events? Yeah, and thank you to the Moynihan Group for hosting us in this awesome space, very different than our usual, um, you know, really raw, uh, usually high up in the sky space. This is really a treat. Um, yeah, Disrupt CRE, we're, uh, we're a commercial real estate technology media platform conference series. Like you said, this is our fifth annual Disrupt CRE New York City conference, which is kind of mind blowing. Um, even more shocking is kind of the transformation from when we first got started back in 2014 and the mentality um, of the commercial real estate professionals around technology. Um, just in a short five years from where we were then to where we are now, um, not only are people open to learning about technology and even excited about learning technology, but you see owners and developers like the Moynihan Group actually allocating funds to invest in technology, even setting up internal infrastructure to quantify uh, real estate uh, technology investment opportunities, which is an amazing thing. I mean, if you told me five years ago that this is where we would be, um, I don't know if I would have believed it. So that's an amazing, amazing thing to have watched kind of evolve. The biggest question I have from either when I was researching this event to actually attending it is, when you say commercial real estate, what does that mean? Because there were a lot of technology and platforms that were on the residential side, on the sure. side. So what do you mean by commercial? Yeah, with Disrupt CRE, um, in the last year, we've really organized information based on asset class so that people can resonate with technology based on their specialty. And those asset classes for us are office, multifamily, hospitality, retail, and industrial. Um, we did have a new session this year called The Future of Living and Staying, which speaks a little bit more to kind of, uh, you know, multifamily meets hospitality, which is really fantastic. Um, one of my uh, favorite sessions this year. Um, but we really do cover the gamut and the whole goal is to connect people with what's specific to them. And let's talk about this fireside chat that you had with Francis Greenberger, the founder and CEO of Time Equities. I mean, it's pretty epic to have such a presence from such a impressive person on your first panel or fireside chat. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about that and yeah. what you really wanted out of that. That was a treat for me and I think the whole audience. Francis is an absolute real estate icon, um, not only in New York, but really throughout the country. Um, he's had a really unique and um, quite amazing career. Uh, and I think the most interesting thing that I kind of take from Francis is that he's this perpetual student of the industry. He doesn't feel like he's landed and he can stop learning and he's, you know, he knows it all. He is always looking for what's that next thing. Um, not only just to differentiate his properties, but also he thinks about things so differently. He always sees an opportunity where people, you know, others don't. And so technology is just one of those aspects of kind of this big picture of who Francis um, is. And I think one of the more profound things that he expressed and emphasized yesterday was this notion of not looking necessarily at the technology for the technology, but really how the technology plays and interacts with the human being. And so having kind of that pairing of technology and human is the key to success versus just looking at technology for the technology's sake. It's pretty interesting to see such a titan speak on such a consumer-based level. Absolutely. What they're doing and the fact that he knows these day-to-day -day small details is quite impressive to say the least. Um, there was a panel about data and new CRE currency. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? How did you piece that together? What did it mean for the audience? You know, one of the things that I found really interesting even in preparing for that session was the same problems we're having today in adoption of um, data platforms and really like harnessing the power of data. It was the same problems that we were having when we first started Disrupt CRE back in 2014, five years ago. It's you have all of these amazing single point solutions and not enough uh, kind of open integrations and homogenization of data to be really effective and actually have that call to action to make decisions with data. Um, beyond that, it's 
always comes down to what is the question that we're solving for before looking at any data set? What are we solving for? What are we looking to improve? And so it is kind of interesting that every aspect of commercial real estate tech involves data. Um, every single aspect, every panel that we had talked about data. We had one panel that was dedicated to data, but it's such an important kind of component of the entire tech stack. And um, I think it's, it was really interesting to hear that as much as we're improving and we've come out really far, it's some of the still the fundamental elements of how it all comes together that is still being kind of worked out. Right. It's definitely comforting being on a similar level on the development side, seeing what other companies and organizations are doing and what their faults are and being, having that sense of vulnerability. I think it's pretty comforting in knowing that it's still a work in progress, it's still growing, it's still always kind of inter intervening and changing. So I thought that was pretty amazing to witness, which also was a really good segment into the following panel after that, which touched on cybersecurity, what it meant for the yeah. buildings, what it meant for a building with one tenant versus multi-tenants and seeing what companies like EXP are doing for this. And it was, it's crazy because you walk into a building and you think, oh, there's a lobby, there's the elevator, but there's really so much infrastructure and technology behind it. Absolutely. Yeah, and they talk about the notion of just more and more devices coming online all the time. And naturally, right, because you have fully censored buildings. We heard a lot of, you know, computers with a roof, right? And that was kind of interesting. But you have, uh, you have more and more technology that's being weaved into the fabric of the building to tell the story, to fill in color to the picture. And that just means more and more risk at the end of the day, more and more vulnerability. With each new technology, there's a level of new vulnerability that, you, you know, that comes with it. And so how do we mitigate against that? Um, those guys had a lot of lessons for the commercial real estate industry. They do an incredible job, and they're probably at the forefront and have been for years, right? Um, of, of tackling cybersecurity as well as just kind of the overall tech infrastructure of their portfolios. So that was a really interesting panel. Yeah, I quite enjoyed that. It was definitely the moment I walked into our, my office building today and scanned in through my RFID card and hit the destination dispatch into our elevator. I was thinking about that and thinking about what you were talking, mm -hmm. what they were talking about. Just like, Am I being watched? What are they looking for? Yeah. How are they protecting me? And it's, it's pretty informative in that sense. And then after that, you were talking a little bit more about unlocking the value of building data. So taking, I think, what the previous panels had said about yeah. security and data like that and how you can export it from there. If you right. Were, I mean, what was your takeaway? Yeah, Deb Noller does an amazing job, the CEO of Switch Automation. She gave a, a whole feature talk about kind of um, portfolio optimization, smart buildings, and it all comes down to really integrating all, you know, every piece of information from every aspect of that building tech stack into um, one comprehensive foundation to ultimately operate the building in its most efficient uh, manner possible. And then you translate that, that's a really granular level, you translate that now and extrapolate to a larger portfolio sense. And um, what are the efficiency savings uh, that you can kind of see on a grand scale. And it's pretty impressive and kind of amazing to think about. It's amazing. I mean, I had not heard of Switch prior to this event. And then when she was going through her presentation and talking about extrapolating the data, I was just concurrently thinking about, oh, so she's a building portfolio therapist and shrink. And she's kind of taking building portfolio and therapist. frustrations and issues and converting them into proper solutions that are readable and digestible, which I thought was pretty interesting. Very much so. And then we had a quick break, and then we went into the session for working as a service. Workplace as a service. Yeah, no, workplace as a service is definitely one of the more interesting topics. I mean, they're all interesting, but workplace as a service, I think, still has kind of a, um, a preconceived notion about what it is, if you know what it is at all, which in a very surprising, like, kind of, you know, turn of events, so many people don't know what workplace as a service is. Um, but I think that one of the things that we really took away was that workplace as a service is so much more than just uh, co-working. It's really a suite of hospitality and services that are outsourced to one of these providers, whether it's you know a convene or industrious or an hotel or a WeWork. We had all of them here yesterday and they all have their own flavor and take on an approach on, on um, how they do it. Um, but it's really their services company, their hospitality company, like Ryan Simonetti, uh, the CEO of Convene, mentioned on the, on the panel. Um, and what's more and more interesting is that you have building owners really outsourcing entire 
management contracts to these providers. Um, they're really property and facility managers as well as kind of that hospitality and, and services and amenities. It's, it's really interesting ecosystem to watch grow and, and it's evolved so quickly too. Right, I think that my biggest takeaway from that is that we're kind of blurring this line between commercial and residential where you historically have always seen these kind of concierge and amenities and services provided on the residential side, but now we're seeing it on the commercial side and I thought that was a pretty great takeaway from that and just thinking about developing in the future what that future commercial space should look like. Yeah, and then we, we jumped into uh, the occupier discussion after that, which was really perfect dovetail because you heard about, from the tenant point of view, you heard from the global head of real estate from uh, and facilities from BuzzFeed, Gabrielle Dubow, as well as Elena Bauer from Slack. And um, they both talked about, you know, technology as a reper repercussion of culture evolving around us, but also how a lot of times they prefer analog versus digital and kind of, they prefer some of the old school elements versus you know some of the more technologically advanced systems and and programming that a lot of the landlords uh, you know are taking initiative to Im implement. And they talked about some of the pros and cons of some technology implementations, how it worked, some of the things that didn't work out, and they went back to the old school way and how that's working for them. And so that was really really interesting. I think an important perspective. I think the most interesting panel easily. I think because it was the most maybe consumer facing or the most kind of ambiguous topic is what is a smart building yeah a big 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 picture yeah, like, oh you put some solar panels on get some windmills and then oh, I'm smart. <laughs> but that's not really what it means yeah. I think hearing that from the panelists that are you know both national based as well as foreign I think is pretty interesting so you tell me a little bit more about what you wanted of it why did you do this or what is your definition of a smart building yeah i think what's one of the more interesting things about defining a smart building is that nobody really quite has that firm definition because what you'll hear time and time again at a disrupt cre or in the last few months is that what's smart today won't be smart tomorrow and the goals that i had for that session were more rooted in how do we you know consider development from a um you know, a standpoint of not building to be done, but building to evolve with technology and, and culture. Um, how do we build, uh, you know, and develop a building that can, you know, plug and play with the latest and greatest technologies all the time instead of doubling down and, uh, you know, and making an investment for 10, 20, 50 years into the future and hope that that technology and infrastructure is still relevant. It's just not the case. I know that my iPhone 10, you know, there'll be a new iPhone next year. So um, how do we avoid you know, investing a tremendous, you know, financial investments uh, with these with these assets. How do we avoid, you know, making those long term investments and doubling down in technology that may or may not be around? So how do you future proof that building? What do what do commercial? How are they thinking about it now? And what are we going to be thinking in 10 years where a lot of these buildings that are going up even right now are going to be obsolete because of because of, you know, they're kind of um, they're really stagnant tech, tech stacks. I wish updating our buildings was as easy as updating my iPhone. Yeah, right? I mean, it should be as easy as updating your iPhone. It should have kind of that foundational layer where you can plug in and you know take out building systems like they were apps um, on your iPhone. And so how do we get to that place? Yeah, and I think um, you really spoke well to that in terms of saying, creating this scalable technology that might not necessarily be one stop solution, but something that we can constantly update on a yeah. basis through things like firmware and software. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it was a fantastic day. It's all about education and, you know, progressing the conversation as much as we can so that we build awareness year after year um, about what's possible with technology and commercial real estate and also kind of alleviate some of the fear around what technology could do for us versus, um, you know, this big gray unknown, right? right? Exactly. No, I mean, it was, it was an amazing experience. And Looking forward to the sixth annual next year for the morning group. Thanks, Michael. Thanks. Thanks for sitting with me.